welcome to GMAC Tuesdays. I had a great idea. Ding, 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 ding. Which is the having and doubling rule. <laughs> um, hold on, let me put this down and not break it. Okay, um, so we're dealing with an excellent math strategy today. Um, something that is going to be super useful on the GMAT and just in your daily life of using math all the time. Um, so, as you know, no calculators on the GMAT, and you might encounter some problems that seem pretty tough to solve, like 35 times 12 or 150 times 36. You're like, ah, how do I solve these? I have to write it out and solve the problem? No. The best thing that you can do is to have and then double. And this relies on a couple of fundamental concepts when we are multiplying. First off, each number has a prime factorization. So you can break down a number into multiple different parts. And with multiplication, we have some rules, the associative rule and the communicative rule, which means we can sort of flip things around and do things in different orders. So it doesn't matter really um, how we break things down and organize them, as long as we stick with the numbers that are there, we're okay and we'll arrive at the correct answer. And so two things to look for in order to apply the having and doubling rule is look for even numbers and look for numbers ending in five. Um, and so I have an example here of 15 times 16, which you know normally if you try to compute that in your head would be pretty tough, but with the having and doubling rule, not hard at all. So basically you have your even numbers. So here we have 16. Half of 16 is 8. And now I take the 2, so basically I divided 16 divided by 2, right? And I get 8. Well, I can't just make that 2 disappear. I have to hold on to it. So bring it over and double the 15. So I get 30. So now what I'm really solving is 30 times 8, which is a much easier problem. It's like single digit multiplication. 3 times 8 is 24. And then I add a zero to get 240. Ta-da! That's why it was such a great idea with the light bulb. Um, so if we go back to these numbers, it's much easier to solve these if we have and then double. So we can have our 12 and get 6 and double and get 70. Oh, now that's super easy. It's 42, 420, excuse me. And then here we can have our 36 and get 18 and double, we get 300. Well, that might be a little bit easier, but it's not much. So let's just have it again. So this becomes nine, and then double 300, which becomes 600. And now we got single digit multiplication again. So 54, it's because six times nine is 54, add two zeros. Whoa, that's not a four. 54, add two zeros. And that's our answer. All right, so. A quick, easy way to do multiplication without a calculator will save you tons of time on the test. Um, start using it in your daily life so that when it does become time for the test, you don't even have to think about it. All right, be excellent to the universe, and I'll see you next Tuesday.